even in like a lot of TikToks or just a lot of videos, you know, it's like black girl luxury and like all this stuff. And people are showing you like how to do luxury and how to do self care, but they're not actually telling you what they do for work or how they're saving the money or how they're able to pay for it. And Hi babes and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you who are new here, hi my name is Imana and today I am going to be giving you five tips on how to afford your luxury bags. This video was inspired by a comment that I had actually seen on Instagram. Um, so you guys saw how I was like posting all of like my fashion reels and like all that stuff. So obviously I filmed those videos like in my closet because of my bags are in here and this is just kind of like my background or my setup or whatever. And so even though on Instagram I was really focusing on like the fashion and the outfits and stuff like that, because I was in my closet, people are still drawn to all of the bags that I have. And so I get a lot of questions on like, how do you afford your bags? How do you afford your bags and all this other stuff? And one person in particular had put, um, it's easy to afford the bags when they're all fake. And so I was like... <sighs> okay like i told myself that 2022 was going to be the year that i did not focus on negative comments but something about like when people just say all my bags are fake i don't know it just kind of like it kind of makes me feel away so it inspired me to just go on ahead and like film this video for people who are trying to start their luxury collection or thinking about like wanting to start a luxury collection but not really knowing where to start how to start and all of that good stuff so i just wanted to go on ahead and like film this video and then i also just wanted to go ahead and do my subby shout out i have four subby shout outs the first one goes out to lynette doug the second one goes out to chanel for life the Third one goes out to Miss Ladybug, and the fourth one goes out to Black Luxury. So hi, ladies. How are you? Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for commenting and supporting, just like so many of you others. I really, really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, then definitely go ahead and subscribe and join the family. But if you're anyone who's like me, it usually takes me about two or three videos to go ahead and subscribe to someone's channel. So I'll have a video here for you, here for you, and right here for you. And after you watch one or all three of those videos, hopefully you'll go ahead and subscribe and join the family so now let's just hop right into these tips that i have and then i do just want to say that like no not all the bags that i have are authentic but not all the bags that i have are not authentic if that makes sense so um i wanted to come to you today and give you just five tips or five suggestions on if you are looking to build your bag collection these are kind of like the tips that i took myself um and i mean it kind of works for me so i just wanted to go on ahead and kind of just like help you guys out a bit so i also want to go on ahead and start by saying that everyone's financial um status is different everyone's situation is different you know the way people manage their money is different the way people prioritize some of their wants and needs are different so i don't want anyone to like take the tips that i'm giving in this and think that like the way that they're living is wrong or, or anything like that. Like all of our situations are different and that's okay. These are just some of the tips that I use to build my collection. So the first one is having like a savings goal. So it's the beginning of the year. It's January. And I'll be quite honest with you guys. In the beginning of 2020, I actually did like a no spin binge for about four to five months. And my goal was to save $5,000. I was able to save that $5,000. And that $5,000 was really just to kind of like boost my savings account. I knew that I had wanted to buy a car. And I also knew that I had wanted to buy myself my speed for my birthday that year so I knew that I was going to be spending quite a bit of money and I also believe that was the year that I bought my Mac so having like a savings goal and the way that I accomplished being able to do all that was a no spin binge so it's it's not as fun as it sounds or as fun as as people try to make it a no spin binge is pretty much where you are getting paid and then you put all of your bill money aside and literally whatever else money you have, you're putting it into like a savings account or if you do cash, you're putting it in like envelopes or whatever. So I did my no spend binge with putting all of my bills aside and I would literally keep like what is left over. So I'm that type of person where it's like if I have $263, I'm going to keep the $63 or if I have 300 and 
$59, you know, I'm going to keep the $59. Like I'm going to keep whatever it is to keep that big number as a whole number. And I just kept the rest. So there will be some times during the year of what, 2020, where I would literally only have maybe like $76 or like $37 or whatever. But it was like, I did that because I knew that there were some other things that I had wanted to buy or I had wanted to purchase or whatever. And like I said, I did that for about five or six months. And that's how I was able to save up my goal. And I, I want to say I saved maybe like a thousand dollars a month or so like that. But also keep in mind that just like, you know, my rent might have been split with someone, you know, I might have had like a little bit of financial help somewhere in there. So I also just want to be like really, really transparent because also like even in like a lot of TikToks or just a lot of videos, you know, it's like black girl luxury and like all this stuff. And people are showing you like how to do luxury and how to do self care, but they're not actually telling you what they do for work or how they're saving the money or how they're able to pay for it and things like that. So the way I was able to put myself in a good position was by doing like a no spin binge, which also leads me into my second point, which is just kind of like having like a money jar. So it's not really a no spin binge, but let's think about it. Like, let's say you've already gone grocery shopping but you want to go out to eat so instead of going out to eat think of like about how much money you would have spent going out to eat and either transfer that money into your savings account or put that money in a money jar because we spend a lot of money with just going out to eat i know i do sometimes where it's like yeah i have food but i'll end up going out and still getting me something else to eat so if you think about the amount of money that you spend at your chick-fil-a your starbucks your mcdonald's your wendy's your chipotle your Cabo, whatever when you have food at home that right there could probably be the cost that you would need to purchase yourself a bag and I know that like I don't know if you guys's bank does it but mine does it like I can literally put in a store or whatever and see how much money I spent at that restaurant within a year and so it's just like you know if you think about it like if you're spending let's say I don't know five or six hundred dollars at your top two to three restaurants multiply that by two or three baby you got yourself a louis vuitton bag right there you know what i'm saying so it's like just think about like where your money is going and so then the other um tip that i have is if you're the type of person who you just want the look for maybe one night or two nights or whatever i know some people have dm me and they're like yeah you know like i'm going out with some friends but like i don't want them to know that the bag that i have is not authentic so i want something like as close as possible if you really just want something for one night one day one occasion you can always rent an authentic bag personally i've never done this before reason being is because when i have something that i really like you know as you can see i want to keep it i want to put it up i want to be able to look at it i may not carry it that often but for whatever reason it makes me feel good to know that it's mine and that i have it but there are websites out there where you can like rent the bag i want to say maybe for like a few hundred dollars maybe you can rent it for a month or whatever the case may be and then you just send it back and honestly if your friends are asking you like oh well where's the bag that you had where's the bag that you had i don't know like honestly it's really none of their business and if if they're not like your your close close friends where it's like you know you feel comfortable with telling them like girl i just rented this bag or i just rented that bag then it's like they're probably asking just to be nosy and trying to piece together how you were able to even afford that one thing i do not condone is trying to count someone else's coins and understand how they're affording stuff because that's literally none of your business especially if you don't know them or you don't have like a close relationship with them but that's just kind of like tip number three you can use a few hundred dollars or whatever and just rent the bag if it makes you feel more comfortable that you have an authentic bag and then the fourth tip that i have is either selling some of the bags that you have to get what you want or having a side hustle so i know that there's like a couple of ladies that's like yeah you know like i have a ton of authentic bags yada 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 some of which i carry some of which i don't but you know I want something else. So if you're the type of person that doesn't mind like switching out your bags or selling your bags so that you can get something else, then I would suggest doing that, especially if you have like a large authentic collection. Now, let's say you don't have a lot of bags to sell. You don't have a big authentic collection, but let's say you have clothes. You know, you can resell your clothes or or whatever the case may be, or you can just get yourself a side hustle for like a few months so that you can get your bag. Some people would say that if you have to do that, then you can't really afford it. 
personally, I don't get into the whole like, well, you can't really afford it stuff. You can't really afford it. And I'm not going to judge anybody who does this. But what I do is if there's an expensive bag that I want, I always pay cash for it. I almost... Well, I'm not even going to say almost. I have never used my credit card or a line of credit or anything like that to purchase an authentic bag. And when I say that for me, if I have to make a payment plan on a bag, in my opinion, that means that I, Imana, cannot afford it. Again, I am not knocking anybody who does do that. I'm speaking for me only. Like that is something that I personally will not do. I will not put an authentic bag or luxury bag on my credit card. And the reason I also say that is just because of how I was raised. So when I was younger, like my parents could tell that I really did have a shopping problem. And I love to buy things, the exact same things in multiple different colors, in multiple different styles. So when the movie Confessions of a Shopaholic came out, they really set me down at the age of like 12 or 13 or whenever that movie came out and had me watch it. And if you've seen that movie, then you see where the girl, the main character, she's using her credit card for all of her shopping expenses. She doesn't have enough money for her bills and she's up to debt in her freaking eyeballs. So when I saw that movie, like, I was like, I do not want to be like that. I don't want to get comfortable with putting things that I can't really afford on my credit card. And quite honestly, I'm not even a fan of having a credit card. I have one because I need one, but I'd be perfectly fine without one. I also personally do not like owing people money. So it's like if I can pay it in full, I'd rather pay it in full. So again, that's why I wanted to explain that because I don't want anyone to think that I'm knocking or judging or looking down on anybody that purchases authentic goods with a credit card because I'm not. But that is why I personally don't. So that's why I say if you wanted to pick up a side hustle or something like that, like even if you wanted to go work in like the luxury store, you can probably get a discount. Like I worked at Kate Spade and we got really good discounts on not only Kate Spade, but also coach bags. So I'm just saying like, there's nothing wrong with getting a side hustle to be able to pay your bag off in cash in full. And you have your bag, you have exactly what it is that you want. You worked for it. So that's another tip. And then another tip that I have is if you don't want to sell your stuff or you don't want to work another job or whatever the case may be, or you don't want to save up thousands of dollars, honey, just get you an affordable luxury bag. So you guys know, I have told you guys like multiple times, like Chanel, I love the brand. Absolutely love the brand. I think the bags are really beautiful. However, I do not think that the price is worth it. Like back in the day, those bags were not worth thousands of dollars. Now I know inflation, all that stuff, different time periods, great, good. But $4,000 for a bag, a materialistic item, personally, I don't think that it's worth it. But, you know, Tory Burch has really, really good like bags that give you that Chanel vibe. I actually have a new Chanel bag that I cannot wait to show you guys. It's very, very similar to one of the Tory Burch bags that I have, and I absolutely love it. I don't know what made me fall in love with the silhouette or the material but I just absolutely love it and I cannot wait to show it to you. But I know that that authentic bag is up there and it costs thousands of dollars. Another thing that I want to say is like even some women who do have like straight authentic collections, you know, they'll message me and they're like, yeah, like I have a lot of authentic bags, but like I'm just tired of spending the money on them. So it's like, you know, if you're someone who's like, you know, I've invested in those bags, but like I just want something else. Okay, if you're looking for something like Chanel, I shop Tory Burch. Or if you're looking for something like Birkin or whatever, I shop Teddy Blake or I shop LTL London or I shop, you know, Saturday house bags or whatever the case may be. Even like Coach does some really good like dupe bags of Louis Vuitton. Michael Kors is also coming out with some great like alternative bags that look just like the Louis Vuitton bags, but it's Michael Kors. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with just getting you an affordable luxury bag. But again, if you want like that name brand or whatever, which leads me to, it's not really a tip, but I feel like I can't make this video without saying it. So it's just like, if you are someone who's like, you know, I just want like, a Chanel bag like I want an actual Chanel bag but I don't want to pay the Chanel bag money and you're like I don't want a Tory Burch bag like I want that Chanel bag then obviously there's also inspired bags out there so that is kind of like 
another option or another route that you can take if you're still wanting to establish like having like that exact look that you want so those are just like a few suggestions that i had for how you can build your collection and how you can get it to where you want it to be again there's nothing wrong with having any type of bags that you like but like i said i noticed that like i get a lot of questions as to like how can i afford that how can i do that and all that other stuff and then also just like realistically like if it weren't for just the type of like hobby that i do i don't even know that i would have all of these bags because i think i was telling you guys in like one of the other videos that i did like i have my speedy bag and i've had it for almost two years and like i didn't even carry it this last season so that's another reason why like i don't mind having the types of bags that i have because you also have to think like am i going to get my roi out of this i really feel like i live my life with asking myself imana are you going to get your roi out of this so if it's something that's like not that expensive and i know for a fact i'm only purchasing it just for like a one-time occasion or i just want it to go up here like i think it was one bag i was showing you guys so i know it was this bag that i was showing you guys so like this bag was i want to say like 60 something dollars i really don't even know if i'm going to carry this bag but i love what it says and i was like i definitely want it on like my layout for valentine's day so i am okay with spending 60 something dollars that i know that i may not even carry this bag or whatever but it's going to make me happy to see it up there in my display so you know am i going to get my cost per use out of it yes because i'm going to take some really really cute pictures and it's just going to make me happy to know that it's there and then also like my cost per use with my neverfull quite frankly enough like i actually carry that neverfull i want to say like a good amount of time so i do feel like i've gotten my cost per use out of having that bag but my speedy i do not think that i've gotten my cost per use out of it so it's like i also ask myself like if i haven't gotten my cost per use out of that bag do i really need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on another bag if i haven't even carried that bag as often so you know those are just some of the questions that i asked myself and some of the questions that i encourage you guys to ask yourselves before you do go out and spend thousands of dollars on these like materialistic items but other than that babes that just about wraps up for this video i hope that you all have enjoyed it definitely comment any comments or questions that you have in the comment section down below but other than that i will see you all in the next video bye